You know you build a gate to last when you're gonna hang 180 pounds off the end of it and it still swings without hitting the ground. And the normal clearance is only about a finger thick. So what was that flexing? Maybe 3 eighths of an inch? Not too bad. In this video, we're gonna do a tour along with build details on this 12 foot eight wide by seven foot high steel framed cedar picket gate that I built about five years ago. And then we're gonna head over to my buddy Tyler's house and fab up a very similar one. Hopefully give you some insight on the subject. I've got my original notes here from it. So uh, let's dive right in. It's been five years and this thing has not settled or sagged one bit. It opens like the day it was new. Could you accomplish a sturdy, rigid gate using wood on this kind of a span? Probably yes, if you used lap joints and some tension cables, I think you could. But even with that, even if you built it super rigid with wood glue and all, it's definitely gonna shrink and warp over time and just not hold as straight and true. If you want a gate that's never gonna sag and potentially last a lifetime, then I think a steel frame is the only way to go. So when I first moved into my house, there was no gate at all, and I had to slap something together quick, so I went with chain link, since that was a cheap, fast thing to do. But then when I decided to replace the driveway with uh, six inch reinforced concrete, figured it was time to upgrade the gate. I knew I wanted something with decent security, which we'll jump into all that in a minute, and it had to open both ways. So let's start on the load post. This is a four inch SS40 post, also known as, uh, it's very similar to Schedule 40, but it's actually an alloy, and it's sunk in the ground a whopping four foot six inches. It's actually six bags of concrete down there too. I'm a little ridiculous. This post is actually reinforced with uh, three rebars inside and 5,000 PSI concrete, and it actually has a tension cable on this side that goes straight down to a uh, helical rod that goes in uh, about a foot off it's still on my property line but a foot behind it so god forbid this thing ever did start sagging i had this turnbuckle here i can put some more load on it and pull it back that was never a problem though just me being a weirdo it's got three hinges that i cut out of four and a half inch pipe so the id it's quarter inch wall so the id is four inches and slips right over those and you see i cut these collars out too and three of those as you go down and the vertical that I welded directly to them, so that way nobody can just unbolt your hinge or anything. It's, this is 11 gauge square tubing, 1.5 inch. The whole frame is 1.5 inch, 14 gauge. And these pickets are a half inch cedar, western red cedar. They were originally eight foot high and I cut them down to about seven foot, although there is a slight taper since the driveway sloped. The American flag is just something I added on there after the fact, and I promise you it used to look much more vibrant than that. It's uh, probably getting ready to be replaced. And to lock the gate, it's got one of these, I think it's made by Lockheed, made in Japan, mechanical pads. These are not the most secure in the world if you look them up. So I also added this drop rod that slides down into a one inch stainless steel sleeve embedded in the concrete the driveway and then if you really want to lock her up you grab this right here and you slide it over the top of that and then it goes down you take this huge abyss lock and you lock this kryptonite chain and that locks her down pretty darn good of course you could always just back into this with a pickup truck probably and break it but yeah i think that's uh you know not bad got a little rack for hanging that. All right, let's take a little break now, head over to Tyler's house and get his project going. And then in the end of this video, I'll plug in a few more clips of uh, boring details in case you're curious about mine. All right, here we are. This is where Tyler wants to put in the two-piece gate. He just got done putting this fencing in over here. Use steel posts and that came out pretty nice. Gonna be doing the same style collar hinges as on mine, but he's using a two and seven eighths post instead of four inch. And these are actually, he was able to find these as a set online instead of fabricating them. These are pretty nice. I'm trying to plug links to this stuff down below. Uh, we just set a string line across the bottom and it's fairly even. That's gonna be our lower picket line we're shooting for. Uh, here's a little drawing. The overall post to post is 10 foot, six and a half inches. And we'll probably modify this a little bit. We're gonna, I think, do a horizontal rail going through it, but using the Millermatic 211, and I forgot my conversion plug to go from 
uh, 210 or 230 to 110, whatever you want to call it, 240, 120. So we had to uh, we had to splice in some of these, and that's live, but uh, that works. Got the first vertical tacked in place and uh, rotates nicely, so things should be pretty smooth sailing. Slowly taking shape. You can see how easy it really is when you build it in place. I mean, we just leveled those bottom pieces. Now we have them blocked and shimmed. Everything's perfectly level. We can take our time as we're going. And now we're just kind of keep squaring it up and making sure everything's true. Looking pretty good. I think with these short spans, we're not even gonna need any cross bracing. Can always add it in the future if need be, pop the pickets off and add it, but this is nice. Now, this side did not settle at all when we took the blocks out, and this post is, is pretty rigid. It's got some sway to it, but this side, on the other hand, uh, well, it's got quite a bit of rock. Fortunately, we're gonna be able to anchor this post right to the house. Uh, he's cutting up some quarter inch right now. I'm gonna do that, and I think that should take care of the sag in between the two, and it'll look good. How's it look? Looks good. Yeah. This side we welded right on, and the other side just cut these little uh, tabs off. We're gonna weld those on. How's that? Couple days later, and here's the final product. Well, pretty much final product. He's got to put a handle on it still, but has always pickets screwed on and rotates freely painted it up came out really nice now the only problem and i'm going to address this in a separate issue is you know we we bank uh, attach it to the house up here so this side is very sturdy you can stand on it and uh, it doesn't flex at all no deflection there but the other side with these I forget if i said these are two and seven eighths or two and these are actually two and three eighths posts and well look just pushing on my finger there after adding the weight of these uh, pine pickets it's definitely got some sag so we're about to measure the deflection and then fill it up with rebar and concrete and see if it actually cures the issue that's going to be a separate video though so i'll plug that link in right here uh, but otherwise everything came out great with it and sure he could just leave it like this but he wants to correct the issue one of the reasons I chose cedar on mine is, A, you would hope they last a little bit longer and they're also considerably lighter. So with these, uh, than the pine, so that was something I considered when I was going a 12 foot span. And I don't think that would have made a big difference in this scenario, but also with these, when they sit out in the sun, they tend to warp and bow, twist a little bit more than the cedar does too. But it, unless you can find a good price on the cedar, the, the pine's definitely the way to go as far as uh, cost goes. But yeah, otherwise looks awesome. Welds weren't the prettiest in the world, but once you paint it, it looks like a million dollars. Some final thoughts here at the end, just to try to answer some questions that may come up. Uh, if you are building with a steel frame like this, especially over a long span, you really have to consider the expansion and contraction. So don't make your gap too tight here because when the sun comes out, it's not gonna open anymore. Now this drop rod, this is actually, uh, these have railroad spikes welded on to here, and this is a one inch stainless rod with a stainless sleeve too. Let me get you a better look at that one. So you just lift it up there. Now, and this right here is a little custom spring-loaded pin that locks into it. So when you lift it up, it just automatically locks into place and stays up there. And since I wanted it to open both ways, these latches you can get on Amazon are pretty convenient for that. You just pop it open, you can go either which way. Uh, keep in mind, when you have a gate this wide, you absolutely have to have a drop rod because you, you you can't leave this thing open if the wind grabs it it will literally i mean if it 
swung back and hit that load or uh, latching post could potentially rip it off the house or if it hit you i mean knock you out cold the wind catches this on a windy day it's dangerous holding all these pickets in are stainless steel self-tapping screws so they self-tap right into the 14 gauge i did add grease to the threads when i put those in that way it can hopefully that those holes won't start rusting prematurely and then over on this side when i originally finished this i felt it looked kind of ugly because it it just looked like a fence really and i wanted it to look more like a gate so i went and got these uh, hinges at a flea market actually and i cut the hinge off right here and then just uh this is actually just silicones on that because i figured in case i ever had to take it off so you can see that's not welded but uh and screwed them on here and so they're just decorative that makes it look a little heavier duty these pickets were originally butted as tight as you can possibly go and you can see now I got about quarter inch gaps. That's part of the reason I put the flag on there is just to get a little bit of extra privacy behind there. I wasn't thrilled with the gap left here when I was done. I got some of these nylon bristles. It was like 30 bucks, I think. And it does the job, works well, the sweeps. The post set on the house side is a two and seven eighths outer diameter, I believe schedule 40. And that was, again, it wasn't as sturdy as I had hoped it to be. So I also put one rebar in it and filled it with concrete. And then I welded on a large piece of angle iron that I had in my scrap bin and I bolted it to the house. So this, this thing is super rigid. Uh, as far as putting this latch on, you could weld this right to the two and seven eighths, but I ended up getting a three and a half inch pipe and that's, uh, that's sleeved over top of it. It's welded to that and that's i mean that's heavy duty you know how i do it right used 25 dog-eared cedar slats to make the well i guess i lied 12 foot 5 inches i thought it was 8 inches but regardless that's a picture of it and it came out pretty good being on an angle i always exit and enter this way because you got to open it like a foot and you're out and then you swing it out i mean that's not many degrees you're going but if you do want to open it this way no problem you just have to push it a lot further and give her a good swing and that will open all the way over to where it's flush there's tons of different options when it comes to the locking mechanism and latch but i knew for sure it had to be able to be unlocked and locked from both the outside and the inside and even if you use the added security we'll call it the, the horseshoe uh, you can still unlock this lock from right underneath in the center and lift that out and open it okay now why is this gate on an angle well when i first moved in that chain link was already there so i already used that load post and this just made sense it was the easiest option well i got used to it being this way and i really liked it because before there was no fence on this side so if i had to back a large trailer or combination truck trailer into the yard i could swing this gate all the way out onto my neighbor's property if i had to and then you know, the front end of the truck could swing out onto his property line but several years later he ended up putting this fence in along the driveway which at first i really didn't like but then i realized after he put it in it actually gave me a little extra privacy in the yard too and you know, it's, it's not too bad i don't hate it but looking at it now with that gate on an angle and this fence here it really doesn't make sense a little bit of wasted space i guess at this point i would have just brought the gate up here She's probably ready for a paint job and restain the pickets, but you might have guessed, ultra easy to do that since you just zip all those stainless screws out, do what you got to do, use some nice thick Rust-Oleum, and done deal. Maybe a quarter day project. Well, anyway, I'm getting ready to go for a nice little cruise on the motorcycle, and it's like 100 degrees out right now, so I can't wait to cool off. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this video. Consider dropping it a thumbs up or subscribing or checking out uh, any of my other videos that I'll plug in the end here. Helps my channel out, and yeah, if you got any questions, feel free to plug those in down below. If there's anything I forgot to mention or corrections, I always add that to the description, so be sure to check for that down below as well. And until next time, this is Chris Brown here, No Nonsense Know How, and I'll see you next time.